Welcome back everyone, how you doing? Last time we unlocked Priftinus and we got access to these wonderful harps where we could train crafting without any input whatsoever. And we're going to need a lot of the harmonic dust we get from it anyway to make crystal tools. But I got bored training here because it is very slow. So we need to get 80 eventually anyway for invention. But I don't like doing many grinds all in one go, especially this, since I didn't really have anything else to do at the time, so I couldn't really AFK it easily. So instead, I went to go kill dinosaurs. When I'm bored, I like to kill dinosaurs. And we happened to get 80 Hunter on the way, so we got 80-something, but just not the right 80. I was actually going to record all of the loot I got from these guys for the small detour I made while killing them, but instead I figured I'd just show you a highlight. We lucked out and got ourselves a Dragon Matic, which we could turn into a Crystal Matic now because we're collecting a bunch of harmonic dust anyway from the harps. I was able to get this Dragon Matic in only about 100 or so big game hunter kills, so that's about on drop rate. And here we are back at the grind of the harps, and we get 80 crafting, which means we can now unlock invention. I didn't bother recording the invention tutorial because it's, it's just a tutorial, it's boring, why do we gotta do it? But since we did back to the freezer, that stupid penguin quest, probably the worst of the penguin quest with the TARDIS. It was just a big, huge Doctor Who reference, which is just that's tired at this point. Anyway, you get 10,000 invention XP from that quest, but you can't get it unless you have invention unlocked. But after the quest, after you unlock invention, you can come here and you can claim it and get the 10,000 XP. The primary reason why I'm doing that is because early invention kind of sucks because you can't really augment anything and disassemble it in an effective or efficient way. So I have a ton of stuff in my inventory here. To disassemble. What level are we gonna get? Who knows? But this is a bunch of stuff that I made, mostly fletching stuff. Instead of alking all of the bows and arrows and whatnot, I just kept them because I knew the money you get from it is pretty much worthless on an Iron Man since you have other methods of getting money like ED3. But the components you get from them will be invaluable. Tensile, precise, other ones, uh, yeah. And the XP is decent, too, at a low level. Tears of Guthix gave me some invention XP, and we got to 22. At 22, we unlock a bunch of the augmented tools, like the Fishing rod automatic, which is a very good way of training invention. Problem is, we need components. What's a good way of getting components? Well, you see, I'm killing elite black knights. That might not make sense, but there's a white knight shop, and the more black knights you kill, the more access you have to the shops. There's basically bounties on the heads of enemy soldiers, which I believe is a war crime, but don't worry about it. We're, uh, the RuneScape character, is, uh, he's, he's a bad guy anyway. It's, we're bad guys. Uh, anyway, these guys, when you kill them, give you, I believe, 12 kills. Really, you can think of it like points. You need 1,300 points to unlock the full shop, these guys give you 12 each. You come here with Legacy on with two different weapons because they use protection prayers and you just hit them pretty much once or twice and they die. And you just kill about 100 or so of them. It's very good if you have a cannon or an old deck coil. We don't have an old deck coil right now because we're here to kill the knights so we can unlock the shop so we can get components and then level and Don't worry about it. We're going to kill a bunch of these knights, and then we're going to unlock the shop. It's frustrating with the protection prayers, and you can't AFK it as much, but it's a lot better than killing 1,300 of the regular black knights. The great thing about this shop is that it has 10 of all of these items, specifically the weapons. Those are the most useful. They're very cheap, and they restock rather quickly. After the mining and smithing rework, a lot of shops in the game had ridiculous prices for their armor and weaponry. But here, these prices never changed because you can't actually craft white equipment with smithing or mining. So we're going to park ourselves here for a bit and disassemble a bunch of this equipment. It gives us a somewhat decent amount of XP considering our level. At later levels, 7 XP per disassembly is garbage. But right now, it's okay. The most notable things to disassemble while you're here are the gloves and boots because they can give you protective components, the staves because they can give you powerful and imbued components, and the claws since they can give you, I believe it's swift components. But really, it's worth it just to disassemble everything because you can buy the 10 staves and 10 of the claws and 10 something else, disassemble them, and then you have to wait for that to restock, so you disassemble other stuff, and then by the time you disassemble everything else, the staves, they'll maybe be like five in stocks, and you disassemble those, and you just cycle through it, and you just get a bunch of stuff. Until we get the spring cleaner and we can effectively disassemble a bunch of salvage from random enemies that we fight, we're probably going to be back here quite a lot, so it's a good thing we have it unlocked now. 
Another clever trick with invention, especially at early levels, is to use invention potions. By drinking invention potions, not only do you make it more likely that you'll produce better gizmos, but also you can boost your level to discover new blueprints. Blueprints give a decent amount of XP. So if the stars align properly, you can kind of fall into this endless loop of discovering blueprints, getting levels, drinking more potions, and discovering more and more blueprints. We don't have extreme invention potions yet, but at this level, I believe extreme invention potions actually boost less than super invention potions because it's a weird scaling system. At 82 is when the extreme invention potion boosts the most, which is 17 levels. So when you get to 82 and you have your extreme invention potions, you can unlock a ton of blueprints, but that's not going to be for a while. Now that we have a bunch of the disassembly stuff out of the way, we're able to make a fishing rod automatic, put some garbage perk in it. I think I got like honed two and furnace one or something terrible because we got such a low level right now. And we're going to take it and do some swarm fishing. Swarm fishing isn't the best XP and it's not very fast, but the rewards from it are kind of decent. We got some raw fish that at a much higher level than we could normally fish. I'm hoping we can get some raw sailfish. I don't think we can at this level, but if we do get them, then we can hunt some scimitops and save their meat for hunting tier two dinosaurs. It took a bit of time, but we got our fishing rod automatic to level 10. We disassemble it for 459,000 invention XP, and we get to level 36. Invention levels up so quickly at the early levels, it is ridiculous. Another fishing rod automatic that we can disassemble, but this time in Menaphos? Oh, how different. Same amount of XP, new level, 42. And now we can boost to make this spring cleaner. The spring cleaner is amazing. After upgrading it enough, it can alk a bunch of the rune salvage drops, or it can disassemble them, or a mix of both. It is great for getting rid of all the low-level salvage that you don't care about while still getting the components from them. And the disassembly feature doesn't cost any springs, so you could set all the salvage just to disassemble. You won't get any gold for it, but you'll be able to get all the components. It's great. Of course, we're going to want it to alk the rune stuff. The alchemy part does cost the springs, and the springs can be a little difficult to get on an Iron Man, but I mostly want this for the disassembly of salvage. It is very convenient. It's a very good way of getting passive components. If you're an Iron Man and you don't have access to the Grand Exchange and a plethora of things to disassemble for random parts, you need to get all the parts you can, and this is one way of doing it. Black Salamanders are very good for training invention because they're very easy to get and they're tier 70. The ammo is kind of annoying, but eh, it's not a big deal. But we got one up to level 10 and we disassembled it and got 46 invention. But I'd like to train some melee. I have a Guthans War Spear in my bank. Got it from doing some Barrow's Reaper tasks. We can augment it. It's a tier 70 weapon. And we'll just get it up to level 10 and disassemble it. Because who cares? It's just, it's a Guthans War Spear. I remember, what was it, 10 years ago or something like that? No, probably 15 years ago. Guthans War Spear was the drop to get. This thing used to be worth 8 mil back when party hats were worth like, what, 50 mil? Can you imagine getting 6 War Spears from Barrows and trading it for a party hat? So unsurprisingly, my method for training combat is ED3. I do it solo because I don't want to leech from anyone, and with tier 70 weapons, it completely sucks. But it's still faster than most other ways of training. Hey, I got the Strength Pet. After a few hours of running ED3, we have a level 10 Guthans War Spear. We're going to disassemble it. Unfortunately, we didn't get any undead components. There was a slight chance of getting undead components, which is very useful. But we get 50 invention. And now we're going to take a look at what we collected in our chest. Not too bad. A decent amount of raw gold. We can alk a bunch of stuff. We're probably going to disassemble those common relics because it's 5k each. It's kind of annoying to alk them, and it's just faster to disassemble them and you can get some decent components from them. I was close to 75 strength, so I just came back in here to get that level real quick, but I wanna show you this one spot in particular. This is where I trained my magic from something around 62-ish to an, a high enough level where I could use Vanquish. If you do it right and you run up to these guys, you can actually get the melee guys stuck behind the rangers, so you're only getting attacked by the rangers, and you can attack the melee guys with your magic weapon, and since they're melee, they're weak to magic, so your accuracy is not that bad, and you can repeat that over and over again. You get about 20 to 24k XP when you kill this pack. And as long as you keep one of them alive, you can leave the dungeon, come back in without resetting, and all of them will respawn and you can kill them again. I timed it at about 5 minutes per run, which means I was getting about 20,000 XP every 5 minutes, so I was getting 240,000 XP every hour at level 60-ish magic. It was super fast. I definitely recommend doing it that way if you don't have a group to run you through. And if, you, if you're a leech, I just, who gives a damn how you get the level? If you're not a leech and you're playing Iron Man properly, 
He has a way of doing it. Anyway, we got 75 strength, which is a requirement for the Lord of Vampirium. But now we're going to do Blood Runs Deep, because after the quest, if we talk to Chieftain Brunt, we receive three times 150,000 XP in combat skills. Now that Princess Astrid is dead, perhaps the next time we see Vanescula, we can properly thank her for saving our life. I just can't stop thinking about her. Your wife, sir? Is she away? No, she's dead! A mix of killing dinosaurs and burying dragon bones and whatnot got us a 75 prayer, which means we can use these XP rewards on prayer. So we're going to get 450,000 prayer XP just for killing some Dagonauts. And that jumps us up three levels to 78. So we want to get 80 prayer. And because I'm cute and unique, I have a bunch of bones in my bank that have been ground into bone dust. And I have a bunch of slime in my bank that's in buckets, which means we can use the Actofuntus. Why am I so obsessed with the Actofuntus? You see, to get the first age outfit, which boosts your prayer experience, you need to buy them with Ecto tokens. There are six pieces. Each piece is worth 1,000 Ecto tokens, which means you need 6,000 Ecto tokens. You get five Ecto tokens every time you sacrifice a bone to the altar, which means you need to sacrifice 1,200 bones to the altar to get the full set. So it does take a little more time. And admittedly, the time I'm spending to get the set is probably more time than I would save if I didn't have the set. But you get more XP when you sacrifice things to the Ectofuntus anyway. So this way, I don't need to collect as many bones. And as a little tip, if you want the first age outfit, you can use ashes because you don't have to grind those. You can just take the buckets of slime and the ashes and sacrifice them right away. And here's 79 prayer. But we're running out of bones, so we need to get some more. Let's go back to the dinosaurs. <laughs> we got another Dragomatic. Great. We got two and that means we, we're we done. We don't need to worry about Dragomatics anymore. I realize this is a bit of a jump, but there was a farming request at the farm that gave me a Menophyte gift box and I opened it and I got an Onyx ring, which means we can enchant it and get a ring of fortune, a tier three luck ring. And we didn't have to farm for an Onyx. We just lucked out. And now we can get rid of our ring of wealth. Get out of here, you useless bastard. And here's 80 prayer. You may be wondering why we got 80 prayer. Well, it's not just because it's a requirement for the light within. We can claim this lamb from the Cathixian Druid that gives us 250,000 prayer XP if we have 80 prayer. He's been holding on to it this whole time. And apparently he had three lamps on him that we never got before. So we can use those on skills as well. They give 100,000 XP each. You can only use it on a skill once, so we can't get 300,000 Herblor XP. But we're sitting on 100,000 Herblor XP that I totally forgot about. I just, I just didn't realize we could use it. There must have been a level requirement that I just didn't have, and I just pushed it off, and just, now I'm remembering it. So we're going to use it on Herb Lore, Prayer, and the final skill is going to be, what's it going to be? Because I, I don't remember, and at the time, I seem to have been struggling with trying to figure it out. I'm predicting it's either Agility or Summoning. Let's see what I pick. It's Agility. That makes sense, because training Agility is terrible. Next up, it's time to learn about the fate of the gods. I don't quite remember why I decided to do this quest, but it's a quest, so I mean, why why not do it? I think it's because it gives combat XP. What am I doing? What am I doing in this footage? Why am I... Why am I... Guys, can you read what it says? Read it. My mouse is on it. Read it. I, you know, I know I made that joke in my How Fast to Max series, but I, I just, I, I think it's funny. I think the, the, the dramatic buildup followed by just some doofus saying hello is funny. If you have a problem with that, well, then, then pay me money not to do it. There you go. I'm, I'm not making, I, I ain't making nothing. I, I'm, I'm, I'm doing what I want. I didn't really record anything about this and I didn't touch on it before either. But I've been on and off going to Shattered Worlds so I can get some anima and unlock Bladed Dive. Bladed Dive is a very useful ability. It's basically like a targeted Surge, except it doesn't share a cooldown with Surge. Shattered Worlds kind of sucks, but if you do it in small doses, it's not that bad. And Bladed Dive is just a really good ability. I've unlocked it several times across several accounts, and I'm sick of it, but it's just it's too good. This is a nice Slayer task because it's safe spotable. You get some decent XP. The unspeakable horrors drop some okay loot you can disassemble some of the jewelry and everything it's not too bad but 
we got 78 Slayer. And that means we can now do the Lord of Imperium and unlock the first step to the Sun Spear. And that means we'll be seeing Vanescula again real soon. Thanks for watching. Take care.